Hey everyone, this is Elisa, and I am going to talk about an online attendance policy. It's really important. So, let's take a quick look at the syllabus in this English 102 course that I have. And this is a fully online class, and one of the things that I always stress in the very beginning of the class is the attendance policy. And so what I like to do is include very specific things that I will be counting as attendance for the class. So I have, you are expected to attend all class sessions. I think we all have that expectation of our students to be there every day. So sessions in an online class include any scheduled chats, online discussions, personal conferences, and online lessons. And so I leave that kind of open. I don't have a lot of synchronous activities in my online classes, but occasionally there is time when I may need to add that in for something. So if I have it in my syllabus, I'm covered. But I do tell students that it's very infrequent that they will be expected to meet at a certain time, but to be aware that that could possibly happen. Okay, so I'm going to measure any of these as attendance, and I'll talk more about how I do that later. But attendance is also measured by your activity in the class online. So I tell them that they should plan to participate at least three days a week on a weekly basis. And I don't want for any student to feel like, oh, they can just disappear for a week because if they are not checking in on a weekly basis, that's how they fall behind in online course. They need to get in, into the habit of checking in weekly several times a week. So I tell them to plan for three days on a weekly basis. And so I also tell them that this is measured by numerous things, but the login times. So in Canvas, I can look to see uh, when was the last time a student logged in. I can also log in and see when was the last time they submitted anything. And that's why I say that completion of assigned online work is also going to be taken into consideration. And then of course you need to tell students that if they do miss the allotted time that you've given them, and in my class it's two weeks, they can miss up to two weeks without penalty. And I say, should you miss more than the recommended participation time, you may be withdrawn from English 102 due to excessive absences. And then I just explain that one week of no participation is considered one absence, two weeks of no participation is considered two absences. And so two weeks of no participation can be the cause of your withdrawal from this course. Now it's recommended that you tell students what the consequences are for their lack of attendance. So it's not a surprise. All right, and then I add this last part where I want to talk not just, you know, don't just show up. I need for you to be prepared when you show up. So I add in the second part that says you are expected to participate cooperatively, constructively, and to the best of your ability in all online activities. And I add that because a lot of times students just show up in like a discussion form and they're really not doing what you need to do. They're just posting whatever just to get it done. And I want to be able to give myself the leeway to be able to say, hey, if you're not going to put your best effort into this, I'm not going to count it and it's going to count against your attendance. So I don't want to be threatening, but I do want for students to give their best effort. Okay, so I add in some of the activities that they could look forward to. And again, I include synchronous class or small group discussions, but that's rare, if ever. And then I include asynchronous online discussion forums and writing assignments. So we do a lot of peer editing, peer reviewing in, in the composition course, and I want for students to participate in that. So in order to participate, you must be prepared, complete all class readings assignments before coming to class. If you come to class unprepared, you may be counted absent, no participation, and you will lose class participation points. Okay, so let's look at how that plays out. So the first thing is when you create your course, you need to create activities for students to do on a weekly basis. You can't take attendance or say all of that if there's nothing for them to submit right? You might have content that they're reading or watching or working on things on their own, but if there isn't any content, there's nothing for you to count as attendance. So I create each week two lessons. So this is a traditional 16-week class. It's a hybrid class, but it's the same as the online class, with the exception that they show up once a week, but everything else is the same. So in each week, I give them two lessons. And you can see they're, they're low stakes. They're eight points, eight points, and sometimes they're even less than that. 
here's one that's six points, six points. And so students are expected each week to complete those lessons for attendance. And I actually take attendance. So in an, on a hybrid class where they meet once a week on a Tuesday, I obviously take attendance on that Tuesday. But then on the Thursday, they're supposed to submit their lessons or complete their lessons and I will mark them absent if they have not completed those lessons. So the student will see in their attendance record two dates. One is online, one is face-to-face. -face. In the online class I do the same thing. So I tell students that I take attendance and I tell them just like it was listed in the syllabus how the attendance will be evaluated and then I only do it once a week though. I will mark them absent if they have not completed any of the work for that week or any of the lessons. And so that helps me keep track of who's been there and who's not been there. And I can also send messages to the students to remind them of the attendance policy when, I, when I'm marking them absent and so forth. Creating these small lessons, and I made a video that you can look to see how I've made these quick lessons. They're self-graded, so there's not a lot of extra work for me uh, to go in and grade them. If the students don't get full credit when they do them, they can do them over and over and over as long as they, as many times as they want until they get the correct answers. So that's how I take attendance in an online course.